This video will be about using natural frames, specifically for street photography, but it can also be used in other genres of photography. I'll show you with examples what you can use as frames and we'll do a few POV examples as well. So you'll come with me out in the field to better understand what I mean. If you're interested in street photography and how you can improve your street photography, you should definitely stay tuned in this video. If you haven't been here before, my name is Daniel Brin. I believe that every day with a camera or every time you go out with a camera, it has the potential to be a mini adventure. So I tend to go on a lot of mini adventures out on the streets and try to capture interestingness on seemingly boring locations and in mundane situations. So let's talk about those natural frames. It's a very effective way to improve your street photography when you learn how to identify natural frames and use them to your advantage. And these frames can be anything from buildings to shadows with a, let's say your, your subject is a light, light subject and you have shadows in the back, you can use those shadows as a natural frame and vice versa. You can use plants, you can use escalators or staircases or even more shadows and you can use a lot as natural frames, structures in the streets, etc, etc. So let me just show you POV style, one location I found the other day, it was a, an overcast day and overcast days they're not my favorite to shoot street photography, I can tell you that much. But I went down to Akkerbrygge and the museum and I found this exit or entry into the building and I thought, hmm, this is actually a perfect frame. So I waited around there for some time and eventually I got a few images that I think looked pretty cool. Alone, this, this picture of a dog with a brick wall in the background wouldn't look very good. I think we can all agree on that. But when you use this dark entrance as a frame, I think it looks actually quite interesting. And I'm very happy when I found these new locations. These locations I haven't been to before or thought about, so I can walk around there and see if there is something I can use to my advantage. And another place on the very same building is actually the main entrance. There was this, this lady, she was walking around there by herself, all in white. So I had my main subject contrasty white to that dark background of the entrance, the main entrance to the building. And I think these images looked quite good. Let me know in the comments what you think. It takes a bit of practice to notice these frames, but when you are out, when you are actually looking for these frames, the more you will find. So I can sit around here and talk about these frames, these natural frames all day, but the best thing you can do for yourself if you want to improve your street photography is to actually go out and try for yourself. Let's try another example. I'll, I'll show you another example of when I was out shooting two days ago. All right, POV style again, so you know what I'm talking about. This is actually a reverse from the first example where we used a dark building entrance as a frame. Here I found a pocket of light I wanted to explore and did a few test images to figure out what worked. I got one shot, then another shot and it wasn't quite what I wanted. So I waited for a few more minutes and wait for it. There, that's my shot framed in this uh, light, this beam of light, can you say that? I don't know. But anyway, you get my drift. You can clearly see the frame in this image. By the way, I've made presets that you can buy. Yes, you can buy my presets. I've made three packs. One of them is called Oslo Street. Something like that, yes, Oslo Street. And it's 10 presets um, that I use as a base for my edits when I'm out and about shooting here in Oslo. I think it's a, uh, the idea was to, to make it into a base so you, when you click it you have a base to achieve certain looks that I use for my style of photography in, in different yeah high contrast you can have these crayon like uh, mm, saturated images and you have a uh, soft look to the images that I sometimes like I think they're very cool it's the most direct way you can support the channel and me so I would be very happy if you you got yourself one of those preset packs or all three i will make a bundle as well but that's the yeah that's that's the first plug i've had on the channel go ahead and buy that preset pack and let me know what you think that would be awesome 
All right, next example of an unexpected natural frame that literally came my way when I was out shooting on the Line 5 of the Oslo Metro. That is my current street photo project here in Oslo, the Oslo Metro. Oslo has some fantastic metro stops. So it's a, yeah, it's a, an interesting project for me. Let's have a look at this image. This lady was sitting on the tram. So I got the silhouette framed in, in the tram window with this blue frame around it. There was also like a double frame in that image. So I think that added an extra more interesting layer to the whole thing. When you have more layers to an image, it tells a better story. At least that's what I think. And I was very happy with that image. If you have come this far in the video and if you aren't subscribed to the channel now would be a great idea to do that and like this video, ask me anything in the comments. Believe it or not, all of these things makes a huge difference and it helps me make more and better content for you. Right. Let's do one final example of a natural frame. I was sitting working at my favorite cafe when I noticed the window on the building across the street would be a perfect frame. I really like these images and it kind of goes to show that when you practice street photography and make yourself aware of natural frames out there in the wilderness of the streets, they seem to magically appear everywhere you look. And natural frames are perhaps the best instrument to use if you are starting out with street photography. I also tried to frame my girlfriend in this elevator but she didn't like it. To summarize this video, using natural frames is a great way to improve your street photography. I and mean, you can use anything as frames, from structures to high contrast images, to plants, to different objects in the streets. You can use crowd as natural frames. And the more you do it, the better you will become, the more frames you will find and you will find more interesting and creative ways to use these frames, maybe to get that double layered frame or that double frame like the one I got from the Metro. Very cool, I was very happy with that. I'm going to make more tip videos like this. The next next video, not the next video, the next next video will be about high contrast street photography. My favorite topic or my favorite genre, I guess you can say, in street photography. Yeah, street photography can definitely have different genres as well. But that's going to be the next next. The next one is about gear and a small hint for you why I don't buy Sony G Master lenses. I think it's a waste of money. Yeah, that's a small hint for you, but you'll have to wait. Okay, remember that every day with a camera has the potential to be a small adventure. So go out, create some interestingness from random um, uh, everyday situations and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!